Okay, it's December 1st, the first day of the Polar Bear Challenge. And let's see what we have in my area. And we are just above. If you take a look there, let me see if we can get it just a smidge above so it's not going to count. I figured I might hit 32 because they said a low is going to be 34 at O'Hare, but I would call this. 33 degrees, so we're gonna ride anyway. It's the first day of the polar bear challenge. It might not be official, but we're gonna ride anyway. December 1st, first day of the polar bear challenge, and I missed it by that much. Missed it by one degree, but we're gonna do a ride today anyway. Even though it's unofficial, the opening of the polar bear season so I wanted to get a ride in for that reason and I see my windshield my face shield is fogging up but hopefully once I get going the breeze will take care of the fogging I don't know if you noticed but on YouTube on your channel if you look up above at least on my channel they have where you can take a survey to ask how YouTube and Google is doing and I would urge everybody to click on that and take that survey the purpose I used it for was to let them know that as much as they do things right and yeah Google and YouTube do a lot of things right but and that's why they're the biggest player right now on the internet but one thing they get abysmally wrong is there is this golden gate that only a few people can get through where you can actually talk to an individual if you have problems either with your Gmail or your YouTube channel. Last time my YouTube channel was broken, it took like weeks and weeks. I tried every way, shape, and form to find some way to contact Google directly and there was just no way to do it. You just had to live with it if you could and hope that they would fix it sometime in the future, which for me eventually every time it has been fixed even if it's taken a long time but I've known people that either their YouTube channel's been broken or the Gmail's been broken to such an extent that their only choice was just to abandon it and make a new uh, Gmail or make a new YouTube channel because it was just so broken there was no way to even use it so I would urge everybody that's ever had any kind of frustration with either YouTube or Google to get on that survey and let them know that we want some form of contact with a human being. I'm not saying they have to have a staff of people there answering phones, but at least have some type of an email system, even with a robot responder that says uh, a person is going to at least glance at your email and see what the problem is. Even if it's a matter of just maybe pointing you to a FAQ or something like that to give you an answer. So anyway, going in the store, I will be back in a sec. I don't know if you can hear it, but over in those three trees, the birds are chirping like crazy. Maybe they're enjoying the fact that it's slightly above freezing too. So anyway, this is the fourth year of the Polar Bear Challenge. And we have well over a hundred members signed up, which is very nice. I mean, typically we get a an active participation level of around one third of those that are signed up. So we should have at least 33 or so people actively participating. And then another 10 or 15 kind of semi-participating, 
at least watching the videos and making comments and stuff, which is always nice. You know, all we ask, uh, especially of the newer members, is just uh, do what you feel like you can do. Don't do anything that you feel is anywhere in the least unsafe. Some of the polar bear members do like to ride in all weather conditions, including snow. I don't happen to be one of them. The streets have to be pretty much clear for me to feel safe to ride. But the whole purpose behind this anyway is to get people to continue posting vids even if you live up in the north. And to show people that you can be a year-round motorcycle rider, even if you live in the northern part of the U.S. or Canada. There might be certain days in the winter where you're restricted from riding, but overall, if worse comes to worse, you could actually get along with just a motorcycle and take care of your basic needs get out often enough to at least do a little bit of shopping and stuff. Such a beautiful day, I didn't even wear my uh, balaclava. And I haven't even put on the handlebar mitts yet either. I usually try to just let my gauntlet mittens do it, but until it gets down to zero degrees, then past zero degrees, even with these uh, kind of gauntlet mittens, it doesn't quite cut it, and I do need the handlebar mittens besides. And be careful if you're not used to using handlebar mittens, too, because that can be rather scary too and get a good quality pair because if you take your hand out to do something and then go to put it in the mitten again and uh, all of a sudden you got to work one of the controls you could be in big trouble so I would advise going out doing slow speed maneuvering in a small parking lot that's abandoned with no traffic around and just see how it works as far as putting your hand in and out of the handlebar mittens The main thing is ride safe and have fun. That's what the Polar Bear Challenge is all about. It's about having fun. Got a little competition going between the Germans, the French, and the Vikings. Along with the teams that Todd will be taking care of too. He puts the teams in categories of motorcycles so we can see what we do as far as teams. Well, my first chance looks like Wednesday for actually making an official polar bear run. Take care, everybody, and have fun with the PBC.